It's 8 p.m. and here are our top stories. A Weld County Sheriff's deputy is killed in a hit and run crash. Now police need your help finding the driver who did it. But it's something that shouldn't happen. It was an act of gross negligence without doubt. Plus, a Colorado police officer is now on leave after a train crashes into his cruiser with a suspect inside. It was on the sideline. Everybody jumped in. Their players came running over. And a fight breaks out between teams at a high school football game in Aurora. Tonight, one of their coaches is speaking out, telling his side of the story. Good evening and thank you for watching Denver 7 News on Local 3. I'm Jessica Porter. We're learning more tonight about a Weld County deputy who was killed after the sheriff's office says the 24 year old was on her way to work. It happened Sunday when deputies say a van pulled out in front of Alexis Heinutz's motorcycle in rural Weld County. The driver of that van then took off. Denver 7 CB Cotton joins us live from the Weld County Sheriff's Office as they ask for the public's help in finding the driver. Jessica, that's absolutely right. It's now been a little more than 24 hours since the crash first happened, and deputies say the man who allegedly hit Deputy Alexis Hynut, Deputy Alexis Hynutz, still hasn't been located. If you take a look behind me, flags are at half staff here at the Weld County Sheriff's Office, a sign that so many are in mourning tonight after one of their own was involved in a hit and run collision and killed while she was on her way to work. I want to tell you a little bit more about this deputy. Sheriff Steve Reams says Deputy Alexis Hynutz joined the Weld County Sheriff's Office back in 2018 at only 21 years old. Since then, she had been serving as a detentions deputy and shortly after graduating from Weld County Jail's Academy, she wrote on her Facebook page that the job was a dream come true. In one week, she would have turned 25 years old. The Colorado State Patrol is investigating the crash and says High Newts was riding her motorcycle when a minivan struck and killed her near the intersection of Weld County Road 37 and AA Street. The Weld County Sheriff's Office says this man, Octavio Gonzalez Garcia, is a suspect. Sheriff Reem says evidence collected from the scene showed Gonzalez Garcia was intoxicated at the time of the crash. Now they're asking people who live in the Colorado 392 corridor near the crash site to check security cameras so they can figure out where Gonzalez Garcia is heading to. We spoke to one Greeley resident who says she and others are going to remain vigilant and keep an eye out for the suspect. I know everybody has a lot of respect and support of our police and we're grateful to them and appreciate them. So of course it was really heartbreaking for the community. We're going to be very vigilant on keeping a watch on the roads and uh, our neighbors. And the Weld County Sheriff's Office is, is currently collecting donations to help offset funds for funeral costs. We've got details on how you can help right now over on our website, denver7.com. Reporting live in Weld County tonight, I'm CB Cotton for Denver 7 News on Local 3. CB, thank you. A Platteville police officer is on paid administrative leave after the Colorado Bureau of Investigation says he parked his cruiser on train tracks, placed a suspect inside and walked away. That cruiser was then hit by a train. Denver 7's Brandon Richard spoke with a law enforcement expert who says he is stumped at how this could happen. After spending decades in law enforcement testifying as an expert on police standards and procedures, Dr. George Kirkman thought he had heard it all. I thought I'd seen in you know, nearly 50 years in this field just about every kind of incident, but this is one for the books. He's talking about the incident that this train crossing north of Platteville in Weld County Friday night that has now led to a state investigation. Investigators say it started as an alleged case of road rage involving a driver with a gun. According to scanner traffic, police were in hot pursuit of a woman around 20 years old. Our vehicle has visual, but the vehicle is starting to pull away. Investigators say the 20-year-old woman stopped her vehicle just past the train tracks near US 85 and County Road 38. They say a Platteville police officer put the woman in the back of his patrol car as the officers cleared her vehicle. Moments later, the unthinkable. Patrol car was just hit by a train. 
The Colorado State Bureau of Investigation says the woman suffered serious injuries and was taken to a hospital in Greeley. Platteville Police Chief Carl Dwyer told Denver 7 the officer has been placed on paid administrative leave while CBI and Colorado State Police investigate. It's difficult for me to imagine how you would not be aware that your car and or her car were on railroad tracks or in very close proximity to railroad tracks. And that would mean you're you put someone in the back of a police car, you know it's a Venus flytrap. Dr. Kirkham says it's possible the officer had too much adrenaline from the chase and forgot basic procedures. You have to be conscious of what's going on and follow your follow your training. And this is so basic, I, it, it, yeah, it's beyond me how, how any rational person could do something like this. That was Brandon Richard reporting. Now, we now know the names of the three people that were killed in a mid-air crash in Boulder County over the weekend. They are 22-year-old Daniel Wilmoth, 23-year-old Samuel Fisher, and 69-year-old Henry Butler. Right now, the NTSB is investigating what led to the collision near Longmont Saturday morning, just minutes after takeoff. No sign of an active shooter was found after hundreds of students were forced to evacuate to Denver East High School's football field this afternoon. The threat was one of several fake calls made to Colorado school districts today. This is a map of where all of the threats were made. The FBI's Denver office says they are working with local authorities to investigate these calls. In a separate situation, there was also a report at Adams City High School today about a student with a gun. Commerce City Police say a student was detained after they found a handgun on them. Well, we're learning more about a high school football game in Aurora that ended early after a fight broke out in fourth quarter. We spoke with a referee who called the game on Thursday between Aurora Central and Rangeview. He claims he was in the middle of the fighting and was knocked down twice. But today we spoke with a coach anonymously who says no punches were ever thrown by players or coaches. He says at most what's being seen in the video posted by the Rangeview Raider Review was just a normal football play. He was outraged to hear what the referee said in the report last night and says the claims were not true. They were completely false. It misrepresented what the coaches worked so hard to do, misrepresented how the coaches reacted and the players as well. The coach says that the real story is what happened after the game when fighting continued in the parking lot. Aurora police haven't found any reports of assaults related to the game. Secret gaming arcades shut down after multiple Denver 7 investigations. A major metro city moving in, calling the activity inside these now former businesses illegal. Here's Denver 7 investigative reporter Jennifer Kovaleski. Denver 7 went undercover, exposing secret casino style gambling happening across the state. Our hidden camera investigation found many of these adults gaming arcades were operating in Lakewood. The lady last week was up to 13K. The city now tells us an operation by Lakewood police helped shut down several of these arcades. Lakewood says they let the businesses and property owners know they were operating illegally and three locations voluntarily closed their doors. The city says it is still actively monitoring one adult gaming arcade. We look at it as these are illegal no matter what, and so it's a matter of us just finding the means and the proof to be able to shut them down. Lakewood says it used existing law to force these businesses out, but is still calling on the state to do more to crack down on this illegal activity. You can watch our full investigation tonight on Denver 7 News at 10. I'm Denver 7 investigative reporter Jennifer Kovaleski. Jen, thank you. And still to come tonight, the final goodbye to Queen Elizabeth. How world leaders honored the monarch today as she was laid to rest. And a warm start to the work week, but some big changes are coming soon. Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson is up next with your full forecast.